for this video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my all-time favorite horror books. In typical Riley Marie recommendation fashion, I have split all of these books up into subcategories. I have around 15 books to talk about, so let's just get into it. There's so many different kinds of horror that I have here, so hopefully there's something for everybody, but these are the ones that I just loved the most. So the first category is what I'm calling Don't Go There. These are all books that have a particularly scary setting or a place that the characters go to that is horrific. I feel like this is a sub genre that's one of my favorites, especially when it leans into like the cosmic realm. So the first two are by the same author. They are Kate Alice Marshall's Rules for Vanishing and Our Last Echoes. These are very different books, but they both have that similar theme of there is this place that the characters get trapped in that is very scary. So Rules for Vanishing takes place in this town where they have a legend that goes, once a year a road appears in the forest and at the end of it, the ghost of Lucy Gallows beckons. Lucy's game isn't for the faint of heart. If you win, you escape with your life, but if you lose, dot dot dot. So basically, like I said, there's this legend. Once a year, this road opens in the forest with the ghost of Lucy Gallows, who was a girl who went missing in this town. And if you follow the road, you're going to disappear forever. The main character's sister is one of the people who supposedly followed this road and went missing. And so now it's a year later and her and a group of her friends decide to go find this road and try to figure out what happened to her sister. This road is probably one of my favorite horror settings. And the game is very simple. Once you're on the road, all you have to do is follow the road until you reach the end. However, the road does not actually want you to get to the end. So it throws up a lot of obstacles in the character's way. There's a lot of that trope where like the characters are trapped in a place and when they try to like go out of the exits they're still in the place which I really really like that trope a lot of very very weird things happen in this book I loved it so then our last echoes has a similar theme but this one is about a girl whose mother went missing and was presumed dead in Alaska when she was young so now that she is older she has traveled to that remote island in Alaska to try to figure out what happened to her mom and while she's there she discovers things this one very much has like portal horror vibes also in both of these books they are told through a lot of transcripts documents videos there's a lot of like mixed media in these they're also kind of tied together but I kind of think saying how they're connected is a little bit of a spoiler so if you are gonna read them I would read Rules for Vanishing first and then Our Last Echoes but yeah I really really love these I feel like this is a really great introduction into horror I just love these but my absolute favorite don't go there horror is The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher so this is about a woman who is going to help run her uncle's museum. He has this museum of like eclectic oddities and it's just like a very weird place. And while she's there, she discovers this hole in the wall that leads to this hallway that based on her knowledge of the building, it shouldn't exist. There shouldn't be something behind this wall. So her and a friend decide to investigate it, go into the hole in the wall, follow the hallway. It leads them to a door and a room that also shouldn't exist. And that takes them into another world of horror. This is definitely a world that I would never want to go to. It is terrifying. They find different messages like they can hear you thinking, pray they aren't hungry. Who can hear you thinking? Who's hungry? It's very scary and I really loved this. Also, T. King Fisher is just one of my all-time favorite authors and all of her books, especially her horror, has this kind of quirky humor in it, which doesn't work for everybody, but I really love. The next category is epidemic horror. So both of these books have to do with contagions or viruses. So the first one is The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. This is a post-apocalyptic Little Red Riding Hood retelling. This is 
without a doubt my favorite fairy tale retelling ever. I feel like this was such a clever way to take a fairy tale and twist it into something entirely new and different. In this book, we're following the main character, Red, whose whole family died because of this virus that was spreading around. She's now left all alone and on a journey to her grandmother's house. Red is also one of my favorite main characters. I loved her so much. I feel like a lot of times in like apocalyptic books, the characters are just dumb. They do dumb things, they make dumb decisions, but Red was very smart. She is a character who loved zombie movies and zombie things, so she has a lot of like knowledge stored in her brain of what to do in this situation. Her weapon of choice is an axe, and she uses it so well, which just was really fun, reading about an axe-wielding main character. Yeah, this is one of my favorite post-apocalyptic books. Really loved it, very fun. And then the other one we have is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is a young adult horror about this all-girls boarding school on this remote island that has been quarantined because there's a virus spreading through the school that is changing all of the girls' DNA. This book has a lot of body horror because this virus is making the girls grow different things on their bodies. Some of them are getting scales. Some of them are growing like extra bones. It's been compared a lot to Lord of the flies because it has that similar feeling of like these teenagers trapped on this island and they sort of have to make their own society but it's like all hell breaks loose chaos everywhere and I really really loved this one I think if you like body horror you will be very pleased by this the next category is another one of my favorites and that is creature features so all of these horror books have to do with some sort of monster or creature the first one is probably one of my all-time favorite books of the year Slewfoot by Brom so this is a horror book that takes place in the 1600s in this Puritan village and the main character Abatha is an outcast in the village because of her red hair people think that she's like marked by the devil and then these ancient spirits awaken a demon named Slewfoot referred to others as the devil he feels a very strong connection with Abatha and wants to help her get revenge on all of these villagers who have treated her terribly. There's a lot of creatures in this book that you can actually see like pictures of because Brahm is an illustrator so he has all of these images this right here that is slewfoot so definitely very strong creature vibes in here i loved this book so much if you like revenge plots and you're like rooting you're rooting for people to get revenge you're gonna love it. The next one is another book by Christina Henry and that is Near the Bone. So this one is about this couple who lives at the top of this mountain. The main character discovers that there is a monster on the mountain with them who is hunting them down. And what's actually scary about this book is not what you think it is. I really love this. I just love Christina Henry. I think that she writes a lot of great horror that again, I feel like is very good for beginners to horror. They're not too scary. They're very fast paced and fun. There's a lot of action. The pacing moves very quickly, but they do still have their scarier moments in them. My last creature feature is my all time favorite horror book. I think it might've even been the first horror book that I read and that is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. So these are about killer mermaids. This book is following a documentary crew who are going to investigate the Mariana Trench where there are supposedly killer mermaids and that is exactly what they find the mermaids in this book are the scariest creatures i've ever read about but i i love them so much i need this to be turned into a movie because i just want to see these mermaids yeah like i said this is my all-time favorite horror there's also a prequel novella called rolling in the deep in my opinion is even scarier however i actually recommend reading into the drowning deep first because it's a very long book. It's a very slow burn and a lot of the suspense and the horror comes from not fully knowing what the mermaids are going to be, what they look like, how they act, what they do. And I feel like if you read Rolling in the Deep first, all of that is kind of spoiled for you. So you lose a lot of the suspense and the slow burn of this book. So my recommendation really is to read this one first and then go back and read Rolling in the Deep and it's like even more amazing. I'm obsessed with this book. All right, the next category is another one that I really love, but I feel like 
it's hard to do it well. So I don't have a lot in this category, but that is space horror. I really love space horror because I'm actually terrified of space. So if there are any horror books that are actually going to scare me, it's going to be space horror. The first one that I really love is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. So this is kind of more of a psychological horror. It's a very isolated setting with only two characters. We're following a main character who is going on this cave mining expedition on another planet. She's gonna be in this cave going down in this long expedition you can see she has to go down this really long drop in this cave and like explore this whole cave system the only person that she's in contact with is her handler who is speaking to her through her spacesuit once she gets into this cave she realizes that her handler has lied to her about things that have happened and no longer trusts her so there's kind of this like psychological cat and mouse type of game it's very very claustrophobic because she's trapped in this cave i loved this it's another kind of like very slow burn much more of like a heavy character book it really really scared me and i loved it and then the other space horror that i have is dead silence by s.a barnes this is kind of like Titanic in space. It's about this crew that receives this distress signal from a luxury spacecraft that supposedly went missing a long time ago. So they decide to go and investigate it. And what they find is this perfectly preserved mass graveyard, basically, of the entire ship and passengers who've been dead for a long time, but they it looks like it just happened. I really loved this book. This was much more like fun than scary for me, although there were some really scary moments. All right, the next category is gothic horror. The first one, another one of my all time favorites, and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. So this is about a woman who is one of Dracula's brides and it's told through a letter that she writes to him after she murders him. It's not a spoiler, it's literally the first sentence. It follows her through hundreds of years of her life and the abuse that she went through from him. This has the most beautiful writing that I've ever read in my life. And while this is a book about vampires, it's very much more about being in an abusive relationship and trying to escape that. I've read this several times and it just gets better every single time that I read it. It's not really a scary horror. I don't find gothic horror to be scary and I don't think that's really the intent either, but the atmosphere and language of this book is just so stunning. I can't speak highly enough about it. The next one is another T. Kingfisher book and that is What Moves the Dead. So this is a reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. If you know the original story, you kind of know how the story goes, but I really love T. Kingfisher's take on it. There are a couple of little twists that I loved and once again, she has her typical like quirky humor added to it. This also just has like one of my favorite covers. I love this cover so much. The last category is hauntings and exorcisms. These are all books where characters become haunted or possessed and some sort of exorcism needs to be held. The first one is my favorite of this little genre, and that is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So this is a book that takes place in the 80s, and it is following two best friends where one of them gets possessed by a demon. The main character is the only person who seems to be aware of what's going on with her best friend and that something is wrong with her, and she becomes so determined to save her friend. The lengths that she goes to is insane. This is definitely one of my favorite depictions of friendship in a book. The epilogue alone made me sob. The way that it described adult friendships was so spot on that it like hurt my feelings a little bit. But I love Grady Hendrix. This is my favorite book of his. And what I love about his writing so much is that he has this perfect balance between fun, silly moments, but also very deeper, more serious ones. And I think this is one of his books that balanced the two the best. And I just, I loved the possession aspect of this book. The next one is Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. This is another group of friends who are performing a seance and during that seance they accidentally unleash 
this spirit that possesses one of the girls and it turns out that the spirit is this Aztec goddess of sin. I love this book so much. It definitely reminded me of like the craft mixed with Jennifer's body. It's very short, a very quick read, but I loved it. Such a great possession book with friendships and trying to save their friends. And then the last book, the last possession haunting book is This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. It's kind of hard to explain what this is about. This is told as a letter that a husband is writing to his wife after she died to kind of process and explain what happened. All of these weird things started to happen and then she died very violently. And after that, more weird things happened and he's trying to process how he got here. It starts with them feeling like they're being haunted in their house. And I don't really wanna say much more. It's a ride. This is definitely more of like, I would say it leans more like literary horror. It goes a little bit more into like the cosmic realm than these other haunting books did. But I love this book so, so much. It is a slower burn, but like that last bit of the book blew my mind. So those were my all time favorite horror. Definitely let me know in the comments what your favorite horror book is. Also, what is your favorite subgenre of horror? I really would love to know. I hope you were able to find at least one recommendation in this video to read. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.